Hi everyone, this is Montana Rock Mom and welcome to the channel today. Drogon, my 18 inch Covington slab saw, and I are going to slab some rocks. So come along and I think I might also slip in polishing up a rock nice and pretty. So come along. Okay, here is a Montana agate that I found and I usually don't like to cut the quartz pockets because then it's just one big slab of quartz, but I want to cut this one in half so that I can get the quartz pocket and maybe some dendritic Montana agate on the side. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. Oh, wow. Look at that square quartz pocket. <laughs> I've never seen that on a agate cut before. Here is a rock found by my neighbor on the river here in Montana that looks like a volcanic, probably basalt rock. But when I take my little metal detector here, let's turn this on, and you can see it it really sets that off so i know that this isn't just plain basalt i got this mohs hardness test kit off of amazon and it is a scratch test kit for rocks and comes with this little guide little cheat sheet here where you can see the hardness of a lot of the common, more common minerals and rocks. Uh, I know that basalt is around a six, so technically what you do is you take the number six, what you think, you know, the hardness should be, and you scratch the rock, and you keep scratching until you don't get a scratch anymore. So if the point scratches the rock, then you know it has a hardness that's softer than that point. So if six scratches this rock, then we know the hardness is less than a six. And you can just see there, got a scratch. So the hardness is less, it is softer than a six. All right, let's take this five and let's see. Looks like I can get scratch there at five. Let's try four. Oh, definitely no scratch at four. So I think that this is probably a 4.5, more or less. So the fact that this sets my metal detector off combined with the scratch test makes me think that this is more probably of a volcanic rock mixed with possibly some metals like iron, which is between a 4 and a 5. So then, I slabbed or cut the rock in half. And check this out, guys. What? Look at that. Has some metal in here. That's some shiny, looks like copper and possibly some nickel in here. I know it's not silver because 
Silver is usually found in veins. It could be cr possibly chromium. This definitely looks like copper. Copper is really soft. Copper is a 2.5 or a 3. So the lower the number, the softer the material is. Chromium is pretty hard, 8.5 to 9. Um, Nickel is a bit softer, 4.5 around kind of similar to iron so let's take this four see if we can scratch copper oh yeah that that scratched that was that's definitely softer than a four okay can see where that four scratched the metal here. So it's probably more of a nickel than, definitely not chromium, it's too soft. Okay, and just to kind of confirm, it's copper. I'm gonna take this two, and this should not scratch, which you can see it does not does not even touch it, so it's harder than a two. So this is likely, likely copper infused in here. So along with all these little trace fossils, you can see all these kind of lines. A lot of trace stuff in here, but the closer you look, you can see all this little these little beads of metal kind of sticking out. So probably a lot of iron, a lot of copper. All in all, this is a heavy rock. I could do even more tests if I wanted to, but I'm pretty satisfied. What I think would be nice now would be to of shine it polish it up a little bit and since it's so warm out we're gonna take the hose and do some water polishing so what I have here is like a hand essentially a hand held sander but it's hooked up to a hose and the water uh, helps to uh, polish rock so much faster and better. So it has these Velcro attachment pads here for your sanding discs. These are your diamond sanding discs. So since this is a fairly soft rock, I'm just gonna start off with the 200. Just slip that on there. Okay, and got it set up and you can see I can adjust the water and it comes out like that. So since it's a 95 degree day, I'm going to sit in the shade of my vehicle in the driveway and get polishing. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the 400 grit. Um, now, not all rocks will develop a very nice polish shine to them, but you'd be surprised. Um, I think this one will. I don't wanna press hard when I'm polishing and I don't want to spend too much time on, on uh, heavier grit because I it's a soft rock and I don't wanna lose all my my softer materials like the copper it's really start starting to get soft or a very soft feel to it after this 400 
probably spending about three minutes or so in each stage. So overall, I'll do 200, 400, 800, 1500, 3000. Okay, we are done. Look at the shine on here. With minerals busting out of it. Okay, you can see it's a little bit better without the glare of the sun on there. Get that nice shine really brought out the luster and the metals in here. This is one of those Montana agates or kind of, I don't know, a lot of people would probably throw this away besides a little bit of water line, maybe right there. I can't tell what's inside. Probably some tubes. Like I see these little pinheads on here that make me think there's probably some tubes in here. I'm gonna just cut where the Sharpie is to see if I should keep it or throw it away. Kind of just peek inside. Really have no idea what this is gonna look like. Ooh. Oh my. That is a nice, dark looking agate. My window is looking good. Let's make another cut. Okay. What is this gonna look like? What? Look at that. I bet this is going to light up. Look at that agate banding right there. I bet this is going to light up in the sun and look, illuminate in the sun. I like this side too because it looks like a mountain right there. Okay, let's see what the next slab looks like. Ooh, look at that banding on there. It's going to light. The sun just brings that agate to life. I want to know if this is just agate eroding out of the basalt. So I'm going to cut it in half to find out. See if it's see if it's solid agate under there or what. See it looks like it's just eroding out. We'll find out. All right, I've got it set up. And let's see what's inside. All right. All right, it is not solid. And it is not eroding out. It looks like it's agate filling the holes. Okay, let's take a look at the base. Wow. I love it. Okay, I have the coolest thing here, guys. I did not even realize I found this until 
I inspected it a little bit closer, this is fossilized poop. <laughs> yes, this is coprolite, otherwise known as coprolite. Fossilized poop. I can see on here evidence of little creatures. So, and probably like plant, it's so, so agatized, but plant cells and I don't know, I've got to cut it in half so that I can really put it under the microscope and show you guys a little bit closer up. But it is extraordinary, the agatized banding going on in this, the little creatures and the, oh, the colors. All right, so let's cut it and take a closer look. Okay, I'm just gonna take a very thin piece off of there and check it out under the microscope. All right, let's just take the little, little thin slabs that I've cut off here and take a look under the microscope. Oh, I can already see this is gonna be so fun to look at. So copper light found here in Montana where I live tends to be a mixture of whatever the creature ate. So different kinds of plant material, aquatic creatures, sometimes you can find bones, there's bugs in there, and in this area they often find snails. And that is not only because they've been eaten, but snails have inhabited or taken residence in the coprolite after it's on the ground. I believe they that there's evidence of up to 130 different species of snails that have been found taking residence in the coprolite. So take a look at these photos that are from this piece of coprolite found here and uh, all the different stuff inside it. It's pretty cool. All right, that wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Rock on.